Good morning and welcome to day five of the modern day Proverbs 31 Woman Summit. I hope you've been enjoying this. If you've been following along this week in the videos, I know it's kind of catch up here. It's on Friday. There's a lot of content. I just want to encourage you if you haven't gotten the chance to go back and to review and watch the replays. If you're not on my email list, drop your best email down in the comments and I'll get you on that list to get um, easy access to the videos so you have them right there in your inbox. Um, I think that's gonna be the easiest way possible. My job is to make this simple for you to find them and to receive the, um, you know, it's more than just content. It's more than just digesting content. It's actually getting an impartation from some of these women who have spoken and shared stories from their own life of courage and of strength and of overcoming poverty and of breaking out and finding out what their gift is and how God wants to use them and even navigating through marriage difficulties and finding out like, what does a Proverbs 31 look like when maybe your husband or fiance isn't quite on board yet? And so really diving into some deep topics. So if you've been watching, let me know down in the comments what have been some of your takeaways. Who is your favorite speaker so far? Um, have you downloaded any of their um, resources that you can use? And like, which one are you really finding life and value in? I would love to hear. Give me some feedback. Let me know what is lighting you up from this challenge. I want to share today how a Proverbs 31 woman puts God's wisdom into action. Because that's really the heart of this, is that we wouldn't just be like receiving, receiving, receiving. Because that's one of the problems I think in the church today is that we just kind of sit there and it's like movie church, you know, we just watch. Instead of getting engaged and giving our gifts and actually using the things that God's equipped us with. We're, we are to be the body, right? We're not just sitting there watching the body do things. Like it's an action word. And so we want to put our our calling and our and God's wisdom into action. And that's really the, the point of this is we want to rise up and step out and take that step of faith, whatever it is, even if you don't know how it's going to end up. You don't know the outcome. You don't know what the result is going to be. But I want to encourage you to stand up and take that step because we never actually know. You know, we like to have plans and like draw a nice roadmap and get the full itinerary. But that is not how God works. He requires obedience. And we walk by faith, not by sight. And so I love how these different women have shared. And next week, we have a full lineup. We're going to hear from Tara Oldridge. We're going to hear from Jen Johnson, from Elizabeth Gilroy. We have speakers lined up each and every day. It is going to be awesome. I'm so excited for it. So, hey, Eden. And so I want to talk about how a Proverbs 31 woman puts God's wisdom into action because um, she is a doer, right? And there are different times and different seasons and different like times of life that she springs into action. You know, like sometimes it's taking care of children, making sure they're clothed, making sure they're clean, right? That's a ministry in itself. That's a ministry of your home. And that is your first and primary calling. So what I love to do is equip and inspire women to be able to use their gifts to the fullest without taking them outside of their first and primary calling, which is taking care of the home. Homes need someone there to manage them. It's a center of life. And so if you have thought otherwise, if you have bought into the lie of feminism in our culture today, I just want to challenge you to look at that. If you believe being at home is not a worthwhile calling, where did that come from? Where is that worldview coming from? Because we want to have a kingdom worldview. We want to look at the Bible and see what it says about how we are supposed to live our lives. And Proverbs 31 woman is a strong woman. She's someone who knows who she is. She's not meek and mild and just like a doormat. She's capable. She's, you know, been equipped. She's been trained. She's practiced things. Faithful wisdom and instruction is on her tongue. And so you only get that way by doing things, okay? And so, um, you know, in English, like language is such a such a thing because we have to translate these words from one language to another and sometimes their meaning is lost and English uses words like virtuous, capable, and excellent to describe this woman but they kind of fail to convey the strength of the Hebrew word which is she'el or probably like a guttural she'el I guess how you would pronounce it and so that word applies to like fighting men it's the same word that is used to describe David's mighty men in first chronicles and so this woman is full of of strength. She is full of power. She knows her authority. She uses it and she knows how to wield, yield her weapon. And, um, you know, she's mighty. Her strength shows in her work. And she, so she carries things through. She executes them to completion. She doesn't, you know, half start things and not finish them. 
She's not only a wife and a mother, but she's a worker and in some seasons an entrepreneur. And so I wanna share, share five different things, five practices that can demonstrate strength in everyday life that you can put into practice right now. Like you can do this today. God's word is amazing because when you put it into practice, it just opens up doors. So number one is she's trustworthy. And we talked about this a little bit on day one that her husband trusts in her. He has full confidence in her. He lacks no good thing. Number two is she's diligent. She works with her hands, rises while it's still night. And th this does not mean that she is like burning the candle at both ends of the stick, okay? I'm not saying you need to like wear yourself out, fatigue yourself, get into, you know, all kinds of burnout or whatever and stay up late and get up early. But she is diligent. She works with her hands. She knows like the tasks to do. She's prepared. She's thinking ahead. And so number three, I want to talk about this one because I think it's really applicable today right now is she's shrewd um, and prudent and she makes the most out of the available resources at hand and prepares for difficult circumstances and she's not afraid. So, you know, this is for you. If you are someone who puts this into practice, if you're shrewd, if you're able to find a bargain, if you know where to shop, if you know how to save how your household money, if you know how to save your husband money, then you are embodying this Proverbs 31 woman. Um, someone's at the door. I'm going to wrap this up here really quick. Um, oh, and not afraid of the future. So someone who is not afraid of the days to come and fear is like so easy to step into these days. It's all around us. It's easy to just like fall into that spirit and fall into that atmosphere. And so a Proverbs 31 woman is not afraid of the future. She's diligent. She is prepared. She has some reserves in hand. You know, she has food. She has clothing. She's not afraid when it snows because her children have clothes. So that diligence and that shrewdness is part of the character of a Proverbs 31 woman. And so just to encourage you, even if you feel like you're not doing anything, you're just like finding ways to save money in today's economy, you are embodying this person and this woman. So number four, she's generous. Um, she opens her hands to the poor and needy. And because she's making a profit in her business, she has extra resources to give to the poor and the needy and to sow into worthwhile causes. Um, and then finally, number five, okay, just a second. Okay, I'm doing a video. Number five, uh, she guards her tongue. Um, let's see, it's in verse 26. It says, when she speaks, she opens her mouth with wisdom and kindness is on her tongue. And so how important is that today, you know, on social media or if you're speaking to someone to just restrain what you want to say? Sometimes you need to speak out. You have to have that boldness and freedom and, you know, just be able to do it. But it's also equally as wise to be able to restrain yourself and not say something when you want to. And so those are five ways to show strength at work um, demonstrated by this awesome, mighty, Proverbs 31 woman. So I hope that that encourages you and inspires you today and that you take one of these pieces and put it into action. And so I want to um, encourage you and invite you into my Facebook group. If you're not in there, it's Amplify Your Impact. And we're going to be going down and breaking this down further. And I have some special offers for you next week. If you want to explore this and what it looks like, go ahead and drop the word explore down in the comments. If you would like to book a call about how to explore your gifts and talents, how to break free of guilt and stress and anxiety, and really know that you are walking in the purposes that God has for you right now in this time. You don't have to wait. This isn't something for like a future season. This is something that gets to start now. So go ahead and drop that word, explore down in the comments, and I'll reach out to you and we can set something up. Have an awesome weekend. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time and we will see you on Monday.